Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hi, everybody. This is Alex, and um, no picture right now because the first 25 minutes of our program is actually going to be an audio recording made at another time and place so that we could catch our guest uh, when he was available. And, uh, well, I wonder who it is. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, from San Francisco, California, it's the comedy stylings of Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> Those were the worst intros in the 80s, the comedy stylings. <laughs> yeah, the comedy stylings. Here's, some, here's the riff master. Uh, Larry Bubbles Brown. Yeah. Well, we were talking about working out, and the, the first time I met you, you I actually... Uh, you rolled up to the old Cobb's Comedy Club and you were on a bicycle. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That's mm -hmm. when I owned a bicycle in the, in the in the. I had a very nice bicycle, by the way, down in the um, uh, the marina. Uh, marina. And then my bicycle got stolen. Okay, so I bought another bicycle, and I didn't like it. And I just never rode it much. I didn't. I just didn't like the way the you know sometimes different different bikes have different balance, mm -hmm. and I didn't like the balance. So that was. But, but my first bike, that first bike I had, I used a lot. I decided I would go everywhere on the bike. Fuck my car. And then uh, then I then I lost the bicycle. Bicycle got stolen. Literally, I got another one. I didn't like it. And then some company gave me a bicycle. You remember there was this company that decided to go back to making the old Schwinn style with the big balloon tires? Yeah, yeah. And it was called, uh, I think it was the, the Chicago Bike Company or something. It was started by the same guy who started the Vermont Teddy Bears. And so he sent me a bike. And it was a, it was a cool-looking bike, but, you know, those big fucking balloon tires. My God, you know. A little slow. A little, little on the slow side, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, no, yeah, you, I, used to, uh, I used to work out with my ex-girlfriend. And so when we were going together, it was, it was simple for me to, to work out with her. Uh, because if, if you have a partner, somebody you're going to meet to work out with, then you're kind of forced to work out, right? Mm -hmm. you know, but if you don't do that, eh, well, I don't think I'll go today. I'll go tomorrow, you know. So uh, we used to work out together, and then we broke up, and I gained weight. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you said, it's boring as hell. So I, I find it drudgery. Yeah. And and I'm wondering, you know, and, I, and quite frankly, I'm not even seeing the effects of it. I've had weight gain rather than weight loss, and you say that's fine because yeah, muscle weight. Gaining muscle. But, but you know how when you're through working out, you should your body should ache a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mine doesn't, and I'm doing like 25 minutes on the bike, and I'm doing a little bit of a circuit with uh, stuff for my legs and stuff for now. I'm doing my my chest area, my and for sit ups and stuff like that. I'm not doing a lot, but I'm doing some. And for a body that's in such atrophy, I should ache after a workout. And I, <laughs> Maybe you're in better shape than you knew. And I don't. I mean, out of the last uh, eight days, I have gone to the gym seven of them. Wow, you know, so it's it. I should be seeing some kind of beneficial effects of of losing, you know, of working out, and I'm not seeing it. All I know is I've been pedaling to nowhere, <laughs> to oblivion. <laughs> yeah, to oblivion. So you know, uh, and I I I can't get on the treadmills. The treadmills scare me. <laughs> Yeah, well, you can fall off those things. They're dangerous. Well, you set it at a speed, and you start. I want it just so I can walk. I don't want to run, okay? And I can't figure out how to set it just right so it walks. So it's, all of a sudden, it's going really fast, and I'm, like, sliding off of it. And So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much on the bike is for me. It, that Stay does, on the bike. It does it for me. You know, I do about uh, 20, 25 minutes. Uh, and um, yesterday, I think I did 30 
you know, but uh, to no avail. I gained, I weighed more today than I weighed the day before. Fuck you. What am I working <laughs> out for? What am I doing all that shit for? My wife goes, it's good for you. No, it's not. You know, I've lived this long without, you know, working out. As so, long as we don't pull a Jim Fix, we'll be fine. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. Well, Jim Jim Fix showed that working out really is a great idea. <laughs> and by the way, my wife is a good example of working out is a good idea because she's had a back operation, you know, and it was from all that exercise and stuff like that, you know. But anyways, she's a gym rat, so I, she goes like three days a week, and she's very happy with it. She loves it, and she does the spin classes. And oh, those look annoying. Oh, uh, that really is. I, would you want to hang out with other people in a spin class? No. So, anyway. So, uh, you got any trivia you want to throw at me this week? Uh, any trivia? Let's see. Uh, let's, I think I've misplaced the names of dead people. Um well, they're they're no longer using them, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I was no. trying to think. God, it was Mother's Day uh, not too long ago, and I was. Uh, I remember the uh, we did a Mother's Day show at Berkeley in 1988. Did we really? Mm -hmm. What was was that a was that was that a concert or was that a radio show? That was your concert. A concert. We did a Mother's Day concert. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Oh, was Bring Your Mother, or did we let mothers in for free or something? I think we did, and it was uh, in during the daytime. Is that that big, uh, what's the uh, big theater over there in Berkeley on the it, campus? It's named it's after a woman who designed it, who was William Hurst's, uh, uh, the, the, oh, I forget the name of it. Uh, Not the Julia Morgan. Wasn't the Julia Morgan? No, Julia Morgan was his architect. And what was then? It was, I guess, this other place over in Ber uh, uh, there that was outdoors. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That so was uh, thirty years ago. Jesus. Oh God. When I used to be a big shot. <laughs> I was going through my head all the uh, all the uh, concerts I did with you. We did the Stone in Palo Alto. Yeah, did a lot of those. Uh, Keystone and Palo Alto. The yeah. biggest one was the Keystone. Yeah, there was Keystone, the biggest Palo one was the Frost. The Frost Amphitheater, October fourth, eighty seven. Nine thousand people. One hundred and four degrees. You're right, and in fact, you could as you as I watched the audience, there was there was there were like trees that would provide shade, but the shade kept moving because the sun kept moving. <laughs> yes. And that was brutal. And people, literally, folks, I could see the whole audience move as the day went on into various areas on the lawn. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, I uh, I took a picture. I had I said I'm never going to have this opportunity again. And I asked nine thousand people to give me the finger, and then I took a picture of it. And, oh, I'd love to see some pictures of that show. And I eventually gave a copy of that, big blown-up copy of that, to Penn and Teller, because we were having a a, a contest with each other to see who, uh, the mo the best ways we could say fuck you to each other, and the most elaborate ways to say fuck you to each other. So I gave them this this poster, this is blown-up picture of nine thousand people giving them the finger. And they gave me a neon light that read, Fuck you, Alex. <laughs> so, uh, but that, that, was, that was one of my favorite contests of all time. And it, it, and it started out by me saying, Fuck you to, to him at some point, and him going, Well, fuck you too, Alex. And then you know, he would, you know, play something on it like, How's your mother? And he, I go, oh, she's fine. Well, fuck you. You know, I mean, things like that. And then finally, it, it was just this escalating thing of how can we say fuck you to each other? Uh, so that was that. was that. Again, and when I used to be a big shot. So, well, yeah. <laughs> those shows were great. I those still have so that fun. neon light. It's kind of falling apart, but it's in my uh, kitchen. And uh, it says, fuck you, Alex, when you light it up. <laughs> You got to keep that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, so you had a little book, and it had a bunch of people, famous people, and famous people. who are dead. And you knew them all. <laughs> well, I, I knew a lot of them. Um, we just lost Clint Walker. 
Flint Walker. He was uh, Cheyenne. That's right. He was Cheyenne. And um, let's see here. And and we lost uh, um, um, a Catch Twenty Two. Uh, what's his name? Um, oh. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Vonnegut. No. 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 We lost Vonnegut a long time ago. Long time ago. Long time ago. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, we lost. Uh, up, 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 up. Uh, not, not, not one of the actors? You no, know, he's a writer. Uh, uh, Roth. Philip Roth. Oh, geez. He's too, I didn't know he was still alive. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he's uh, he, he was still alive. He died at, let me see here, um, 85. Well, that's kind of young. I'm going to be 85 in a while. In about seven yeah, years. I didn't look that old now. <laughs> Doesn't look that old either. He, Clint Walker was 90, you know. Jesus. So, yeah. Um, and uh, a lot of people, it's amazing, although it's amazing. It's always, we've talked about this before, but it's amazing with comics how long a lot of comedians live. They either die really young. Or really old. Or really old. There's no no halfway measure on that deal. Um, Mort Saul just had his 91st birthday here. Yeah, a good example. Uh, Mel Brooks has got to be approaching 100, as well uh, as Carl Certainly Lee. early 90s, yeah. Oh, no, not early 90s. Mel Brooks. Let me look up Mel Brooks. I'll tell you how old he is. I think he's a lot older than that. Um uh, let me see, Mel Brooks, uh, he was born in 1926, and that would make him how old? Uh, maybe 92. Yeah, Nine, well, actually, he's 91. He was born 90. June 28th. He's coming up on a birthday. 91 years old. Wow. You know. And uh, I think his friend Carl Reiner is a little older. Yeah. Uh, you want me to look that up? I can find that out. Uh, Anything you want to know, folks, it's in... Oh, you wouldn't know this. Wikipedia. Uh, <laughs> I'm saying, I actually go on Wikipedia sometimes. Yeah? How long does it take you? It <laughs> takes a long time. <laughs> Dial up some bitch. He's 96 uh, years old, Carl Reiner. 96. Jesus. Yep. Yep. Well, the... Uh, let's see. Who's... Kirk Douglas is over 100. Kirk Douglas is 101. That's amazing. I think. Uh, uh, proving only the good die young. Supposedly he was a real shithead. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, you, you know the old story. That it's still a rumor, but and we have to list it, I guess, as alleged. But supposedly he raped Natalie Wood when, she, when she was like 15 years old. Wow. Yep. Yep. But, uh, so sue me, Kirk. <laughs> okay, shut up, Kirk. You talk too I can't much. Wait, can't wait to cross-examine you, Kirk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's supposedly, uh, you know, he was producing films, and uh, he, she went over to, you know, it's the old casting couch days, you know, in Hollywood, only it didn't age didn't even matter. God. I mean... I mean um, you know, the Me Too movement would have a real field day with Kirk Douglas, and, and they probably should anyway. But uh, because he's so old, they haven't even touched him. And that story's been running around for years. And that's crazy. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So maybe things were actually worse back then than now. Oh, they were terrible. I mean, there are, there are, there are stories, and I don't know if this is true, that certain Hollywood producers were having their way with Shirley Temple when she was a kid. Oh, jeez. Now, I don't know if that's true, but I've heard stories, okay? I hear things. Um, you know, so, I mean, and, and if you don't think guys like, um, you know, Louis B. Mayer and people like that weren't, fucking everything in the studio, you're out of your mind. They felt that was their privilege. Yeah. And nobody ever even 
batted an eyelash about it. And then all of a sudden, of course, the tide changes and we have social media and the Me Too movement and all of a sudden, people who did something back when it was perfectly acceptable, at least socially, although I never considered that positive social uh, uh, actions, um, are suddenly being held to account for their demeanor at a time when that kind of thing was countenanced. Yeah. Boy, am I not a man with the words today. We, uh, <laughs> you know. When, uh, you, when you get charged for groping a DA on the birth of a nation, maybe. <laughs> well, it, it's kind of like the times when they went after everybody because are you now, are you ever been a member of the Communist Party? And, you know, I was with the Communist Party in uh, 1935. Well, yeah, yeah, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great analogy. A lot of people were communists in 1935. It was, it was almost a fad. Okay, yeah. uh, but by the time you got to the fifties, they had long since had nothing to do with the uh, with the with the uh, 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 you know the, with the Communist Party, and yet they were being held to account for it. Well, you know uh, when behavior, you know I always consider that kind of behavior towards women, oafish and terrible. Okay. But that was just me. I, my father raised me as a gentleman, so I always found it wrong. But society didn't find it wrong. Everybody talked about the casting couch. Oh, the Hollywood catch, the casting couch. And that's really what all that was, was the Hollywood casting couch. And it was, it was accepted as a fait accompli if you went to Hollywood. If you went to Hollywood and you were a female actress, you knew you'd have to fuck a couple of producers yeah. to get in the movies. And... While that's incredibly bad behavior and it's horrible in retrospect, it was the way it, it was the zeitgeist. It was the tempo of the times, and you know you can say, okay, from this point we no longer will do this action because it is bad. Then that's fine. Then we then we have a new rule going and a new morality, and that's good. But holding a lot of these people to account for something that went on way back when, Mike. God, you know, it it uh, uh, it was bad of them to do it then. It's still bad to do it, but nobody said it was bad to do it at the time. So not having a mo moral compass, these people simply felt, well, there's no rule against it. It's okay. Nobody's going to yell at me for doing it. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and just the charge ruins your career. So Oh, just the charge alone today ruins your career. Yeah. And, and and now now what it's become is like a Salem witch trial. It's like is uh, is uh, Kevin Spacey a witch? Yes, he's a witch. Okay, well we'll burn him at the stake. Uh, not to say that you know I haven't heard things about Spacey that he's a real prick and all of that. And he's probably part of the reason why a lot of these people get thrown to the wolves is because nobody's there to catch them because they hate them. Yeah, You know, I mean, Harvey Weinstein, nobody was going to defend Harvey Weinstein because they didn't like him in the first place. You know, he was a pig and he was oafish and he was a terrible human being. And he ran Hollywood like, a, you know, with a, his, his, his place in Hollywood he kind of used as a bully pulpit. And, um, you know, they when he finally went down, nobody was there to catch him. You know, nobody was there to say, well, wait a minute, he was really a good guy. I mean, I heard Dave Chappelle did a very interesting thing in one of his Netflix specials in which he defended Bill Cosby. He said, say, <laughs> really? no, say what he said, say what you will about Bill Cosby and you can assail him for what his actions were over the years with females. But let's not forget what he did for black people. You know, the scholarship funds, the fact that he had the first television show that portrayed a professional black family, you know. And he went on and on about all these good things that Bill Cosby mm -hmm. had done. He said, and we can't forget those just because we're assailing him now for what might be, might be incidences of drugging women and raping them, okay? And I thought that that was a pretty astute thing to say. Yeah, pretty you know. bold. Well, I mean... Do we throw out the good that somebody did because he did something bad? Do we suddenly demean all the work that he's done that had positive value? I mean, there were literally hundreds of 
kids who went to college because of Bill Cosby. Black kids. Uh, yeah. You know, and what he did with that show, that TV show, was groundbreaking for the black community. Mm -hmm. at, at last, there was somebody they could watch on television, a family they could watch on television that they could relate to. So, yes, Cosby in his personal sexual behavior was terrible, but do we throw all that out? And I think uh, Chappelle finished by saying something to the effect of, sometimes you got to take the good with the bad. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but but you can't completely deny the good that somebody's done. Yeah, you can't deny it, and I think uh, I think most the I think they want to. A lot of people yeah. just want to throw everything out. Yeah. Now I you know I I don't know how I would have fared in today's um, uh, mentality about the Me Too movement and so on, but I don't think there's a woman I know that could ever say that I ever acted inappropriately towards them. But I think there are a couple of women who are crazy enough to accuse me anyway. Exactly. Yeah, to any, anybody, and well, then I, you're I, screwed. I, I know one woman that's really nuts, okay? Um, I guess that's the reason I kept having sex with her. And I mean, this woman would come on to me and everything, but I'll bet that if I were still somewhat pseudo-famous, that... She would come forward and say, yes, well, he blah, 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 because she was crazy. She was yeah. nuts. But I never treated her in any way that would be disrespectful or horrible, you know. And she'd probably have Gloria Allred by her side. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, you know, you know, it, 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 uh, there's a documentary on Netflix uh, on Gloria Allred, and I kind of got an appreciation for her. I mean, she has taken a lot of cases pro bono in her time and really has fought for, for women's rights. And, and so, you know, yeah, we think of her as like an ambulance chaser. But really there's more to her than that. So I do have a bit of an appreciation with her, although I still think that if you're going to accuse somebody of something, the worst person to have by your side is Gloria Allred because they, everybody goes, oh, there's Gloria Allred again. You know, she's defending another one. <laughs> like, uh, who who was it? I saw her with a whole bunch of women a couple of days ago that suddenly were doing some kind of accusations as a class action suit. Uh, and then she has a daughter who does the same thing, you know, in the same uh, Lisa Bloom, who is does the same thing. Uh, and, it, you know, but I, you know, and listen, I think it's time... It was time to come that, that this would be brought to light, that women shouldn't have to sleep with a producer in order to get a job, okay? That should be considered, that shouldn't be considered even in the, uh, a factor, but their ability should be the factor. And, yeah. um, you know, I, uh, uh, there are several women, believe it or not, who owe their Academy Award that they won for Best Actress to Harvey Weinstein, because Harvey, when he would, every year when the Academy Awards came out, he won a lot of them, and the reason he won a lot of them is he went out and he literally campaigned for them like he was running for president. Yeah, and so, it's a PR thing. And part of that PR was promoting a woman in a role that was in one of his pictures, and several women, Jennifer Lawrence is a good example of it, uh, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow is another example of it, are women who have benefited very immensely by getting an Academy Award courtesy of the effort of Harvey Weinstein. Now, I'm not saying this makes Weinstein any better a person, but you know these same people then turned around and accused him of all kinds of stuff, and yet this is the person who gave them an Academy Award which allowed them to make more money than they had ever seen in their life. Exactly. You know, so, uh, you know, again, we're taking, saying the good with the bad. Weinstein is the worst example of this. He, I mean, he was a serial molester. He was a yeah. terrible, terrible person. But nevertheless, he, he did do a lot of good for a lot of people, you know. And, uh, but he also had a power that he wielded, and everybody was afraid of him. And that was the terrible part about Harvey Weinstein, and that's why nobody wants to defend him now. And quite frankly, I'll agree with anybody that says he was a prick. Yeah, so, and uh, you know, 
But I think, like, before social, like you said, before social media and all this, in the four, it must have been unbelievable in the forties and thirties. Just you would never hear any of this. Though. Oh no, no, you would never have to worry about this if you were an actor. You could, you, you could engage in any behavior you wanted to. Except I thought the, I read that uh, John Houston had actually killed someone in a DUI and pretty much. Walk away from it because the studios. William the William Randolph Hearst so killed somebody, but we'll have to talk about that on another day. He did it on a boat trip. Uh, uh, I I think yeah I've yeah, heard about that. He, he, it was a he was a producer, and uh, I'm trying to remember his name now. I'll go get it for our next gathering here. And he uh, he thought that she it, it, what was happening is Charlie Chaplin was having sex with Marion Davies, and he thought it was Chaplin. It was dark, and he shot him. And then the whole oh. thing was covered up, mainly by Luella Parsons, who then had a job for life with Hearst because of her cover-up. Anyway, really? Yeah. Oh, it's a great story. I'll tell you next time. Okay. But I'd ladies and gentlemen, this has been the lovely and attractive Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Bubs. Thanks, Alex. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gavin. The Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, everybody. How are you? I'm Alex. Oh, let me turn my mic down a little bit. It's a little too loud. Okay. There we go. All right. Hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, boy, I seem to be distorting a little bit. I don't know. I can't tell. I can't tell with these earphones any longer. Um, let me just uh, uh, plug these things in here. Uh, how, how are you? Uh, let me turn on the uh, let me turn on the old uh, 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 Skype so that everybody can call me. Uh, yes, everybody can call me. We uh, we have a Skype number and people call and we've actually put your face on video. Isn't that nice? Uh, with uh, and without your approval. <laughs> oh well, your approval is calling. Okay. Anyway, we put up uh, the uh, 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 the video on uh, GabNet. If you go over to gabnet.net, you'll find out how to call our program using Skype. Uh, and also, there's a phone number there if you don't want to use Skype. But it's all there. And you go over and you check it out. And uh, we will uh, take your call. And we, will, we can also see you as well. If, you don't, if you're using the phone, we can't see you. Uh, the downside is you can't see anybody else either. And that's a problem. Okay. Uh, because uh, we what we do is when we have a, a group of people talking all at the same time and what they do is when they want to talk they sometimes raise their hands and we know that they want to they want to say something and so we, we have more control over the situation if you don't have a camera or you can't see the panel you you can't we can't see you raise your hand so you then you got to yell okay if you're using the regular uh, uh, phone thing, okay? You, you know, the old phone, remember the phones? Oh, hey, look, first one in tonight is uh, Jeff Stein. Uh, he hello there, Jeff. How are you? I'm fine. How about you? I'm uh, I'm doing okay. I'm a little tired tonight for some reason, but yeah, I'm always tired. I mean, exhausted. But uh, we, we, you know, we, we, we're just uh, going along singing a song, start, starting another week here. Of this nonsense, I've but, been had a I've had a busy, busy week in the last really well today or yesterday. How was it busy? Well, my granddaughter got bar mitzvahed. Okay, and all kinds of family came over. Oh boy! Oh yeah, the fun and the bad. <laughs> you mean the ones you like and the ones you don't like? Yeah, of yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you got to take them all. They're your relatives. That's right. You get them all. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have you know. I really don't have any relatives. Uh, there's there's none on my wife's side. I don't think. I haven't. I don't think I've met up with any of her relatives. And on my side, my mother's dead. My father's dead. My uncles and aunts are dead. Uh, I may have some cousins up in uh, upstate New York, but uh, outside of that, I uh, I don't have anybody. So. You know, if if I had a a kid and it had a bat mitzvah or something, nobody would come. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, so maybe I, maybe that's a blessing. Could very well be considered a blessing. 
you know. I guess you could consider that. Yeah, yeah. I have, um, I, I had five uncles. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, my grandmother and grandfather were part of a family yeah. where a great grandmother mm -hmm. got married seven times. Oh, really? Yeah. And the, the husband died each time. Oh. So there are theoretically seven different families that are somewhat related to us. Yeah. I, I, I don't get to see them <laughs> very is, often. Is there in every family there's a crazy uncle? Is there a crazy uncle in your family? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, good. I wanted to make sure of that. I used to have a crazy uncle in our family. It, we didn't know what he did for a living, and my mother would never tell me. You know, and since she's gone now, I can't ask her. Yeah, she's not going to tell you anyway. But he, she was—he was called my uncle Mully, and uh, Uncle Mully did something. I think he—I think it's—I uh, think maybe he was like he took bets or something. He was like a bookmaker. You know. It could be. Yeah. Uh, because whenever they say, what does he do for a living? And, and it, well, uh, he's, uh, he, uh, he has many different things he does. You know, one of those answers. And I never, ever knew what my Uncle Mully did. Uh, his name was Sam. Uh, mm. But, uh, what, you know, what, what he did. I had, had no idea. So, you know, the, the, the crazy uncle in the family, I guess, was my Uncle Mully. Um, uh, uh, we're being joined by Phil Meyer. Phil, right. did you have a crazy hey. uncle in your family? Uh, everybody's got a crazy uncle. Yeah, I, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I'm not quite sure. I don't think mine are alive anymore. But, uh, yeah, we, we've got a crazy uncle, I'm sure. What do you mean you're sure? You don't <laughs> know if you have a crazy uncle or not? Well, they're lucid at, at times. You know, sometimes they're not crazy. You know, well, I mean, they... like, for instance, was there a relative like my Uncle Mully who was mysterious in that you didn't know exactly what he did for a living? Yeah, I, I can't say that uh, my family was that uh, uh, unusual. Well, yeah. I don't know that my family was that unusual either, but there was still this Uncle Mully, and I don't know what he ever did. Uh, I had one uncle that was the Hanger King of New Jersey. Uh, he, he made wire hangers. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. That's enough to drive you crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, anyway, what's uh, what's cooking? Well, wait a minute. We're still talking about uncles. Yeah. Uh, I'm crying uncle. I mean, my uncle, uh, Molly, uh, among other things, I mean, we never knew what he did. and uh, uh, he, But he was a nice guy. You know, it wasn't like he, I didn't like him. I, in fact, I adored him. Yeah, they're all nice guys. You know, if you call somebody uncle, it's uh, even if they're a family friend and you refer to them as uncle, it's because they're important to you. And, he used, and to, he, he used to like to wrestle with me. Now, I don't think there was anything sexual in it. So uh, it liked, was, um, uh, what's his name, the actor uh, who was wrestling with the kid? Uh, oh, Spacey? Spacey, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you had an Uncle Spacey? No, I didn't have an Uncle Spacey. <laughs> We're being joined by Ray Renati, ladies and gentlemen. Who, Howdy. Who usually, he's always good for a quote in our clips. <laughs> yeah. I'm good for what? You're, uh, uh, get, get, turn, turn our sound off. You're, 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 Is my sound? Yeah, your sound's off. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Is it on? Is it on? Yeah. Okay. Wait, I gotta get this. I don't, they tried to upgrade my Skype again and things are screwed up. All right. Yeah. yeah. It's a okay. conspiracy. Mm. Oh, I know. <laughs> totally. Okay, here we go. So I have, okay. one, I have one Uncle Sam who's still alive. Yeah, yeah. He must be 95 or something like that. No, well, well, my Uncle Sam, I salute. No, it's... Uh, yeah. Do you ever yeah, have a crazy uncle in your family, Ray? Do I have a crazy uncle? You know, uh, no. Really? No, I don't. No, I don't have a crazy uncle. And a crazy aunt. Um, yeah, my aunt's a little crazy. Yeah. Okay. What do you mean? How was yeah. she? How's she crazy? Uh, uh, 
it's like she's had early Alzheimer's for the last 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, if you met her, you'd think she was like super liberal, yeah. it, just in her personality. And then you find find out when you really get to know her, she's like 10, 10 notches right of Phil. Ten notches to the right of Phil. Like she's a fascist. She's a. She's like. <laughs> really. But you would never. She yeah, she's an artist. The, she's a painter. Does she, does she goose step to the kitchen? She, uh, I've seen her. Yeah. She, yeah. She goose steps really well too. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, she's. Yeah, she's like super right wing, like crazy white wing. Yeah. Yeah. Right wing. I wish I I I I I, I, I had uh, most of my most of my relatives were pretty normal. I guess you know. Yeah. My uncle Lou was my favorite uncle, uh, and he and I used to get in his uh, sports car and drive up to Lake Tahoe, throw a little bit of money on a on a table, uh, or into a slot machine, and then get back in the car and go back to San Francisco. <laughs> and one time, I remember one time we were driving back, and all of a sudden, there was a red light behind us, and it was a cop stopping him because he was driving too fast in the sports car. So he said, I'm, I got to pull over here because he's going to try and give me a ticket. Act as sick as you possibly can. <laughs> so I, I, I uh, embraced all my Stanislavski method that I could. <laughs> and, and, and he says, uh, I'm sorry, officer. The reason I was racing is I've got a sick kid here and I got to get him home. You know, I got to get him maybe to a hospital or something like that. And the cop said, uh, how are you doing, kid? Now, oh, Oh, I was I was putting on I this was, uh, you know, this was like, uh, yeah, this was an actor's workshop class I was doing. You know, I was really <laughs> I was really emoting and the cop let us go. Oh, and he, good he job. and after that, he just absolutely adored me. Anything I That's wanted, you know. <laughs> um, so, Phil, yeah. did you ever get get stopped by a policeman while you were driving? Yeah, all the time. And, then, and and you showed him your little badge or whatever you had, right? No, no I, I wasn't that obvious. Um, I uh, was taught by my field training officer to say, uh, yes, I'd be glad to get you my uh, license and registration, but I have to reach past my off-duty weapon. Is that okay? And, <laughs> oh, <weapon>. I see. <laughs> You know, who are you with? And you tell him, and the guy says... You got an ID? I know. Yeah. I work with the mafia. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, they, sometimes they look, sometimes they say, do you know so-and-so? And, -so? and uh, it's see you later, bye. Do you know, I, uh, I never got out of a ticket because of who I am, except once. I was yeah. driving back from Mendocino, and I'm along that coast highway, you know, that coast highway that has a curve every five seconds? Sure, highway one. Yeah, and I'm a little bit on a straightaway, so I'm trying to make up for some time that I was losing with all these turns. And all of a sudden, the red light's behind me, and the cop stops me, and he says, you know, you were speeding back there. And I said, yeah. And then he looked at me, and he went, you're Alex Bennett. <laughs> and I went, yeah. You know, now, now I'm thinking, like, he's either going to love me or hate me. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and he said, I just love your show. I listen to it all the time. Listen, drive carefully and have a nice night. And he didn't give me a ticket. Awesome. You know, it's it, it's not necessary to ticket somebody. Uh, you can stop them. You can warn them. Uh, you can ticket them. It's, it's up to the cop whether he's going to ticket them or not. Yeah. On the other hand, I don't want to get a lecture from an 18-year-old, you know? Well, they're not 18 if well, they're cops. Uh, if they're cops, they're pretty, somebody who's pretty young, you know? Yeah. Well, do you know what you did back there? Yes, I know what I did back there. You know why they ask you that? Why? Uh, to get you to admit what you did when they mm -hmm. give you the ticket. It's called a um, something statement. I forgot. It's been so many years. But uh, it, Well, is that why they ask you, do you know what you did back there? Yes, well, then yes, fuck them. Yes. No, I don't know what I did back there. <laughs> That's exactly what you should say. Yeah. Hey, uh, because, Phil. Yeah, it, spontaneous so, confession or something. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, so twice, I, I've had cops make up stuff. Um, when, when they pulled me over and made a mistake, they make, yeah. make things up. They've made things up so that they could still give me a ticket. Like, um, 
One time I was in Tahoe and uh, a cop pulled me over because he said I passed a bus on the left-hand side while it was snowing, but there was no bus. He must have got my car mixed up with somebody else, and he goes, well, you're supposed to have chains on. And I said, well, no, I got snow tires. <laughs> and it said chains or snow tires. And, um, oh, no, that's what it was. He goes, you don't have chains on. I have to give you a ticket. And I said, no, I have snow tires. And he says, well, you passed a bus back there on the left illegally, so I'm going to give you a ticket anyway. And there was no bus. I never passed a bus. And I had a car full of people, and it's like, he didn't pass a bus. And I said, yeah. shut up. Man. And then the and then like last year I was riding well, home like three give, in the did morning. Did he give you the ticket for passing the bus? Yeah. So did you go there to court? No did you go to court? No, because it was in Tahoe, and you have to go like uh, – between two and four on a Friday afternoon or something. <laughs> so <laughs> I forget it. I just paid it. And then um, and the other one was coming down 101 from San Francisco, like three in the morning. And uh, I, I was speeding for about 10 seconds. And I realized it myself and I slowed down and he pulled me over for speeding. But he thought I was drunk and he got me out and tested me. I wasn't drunk. And then just to put the thing, put a little more on so he could give me the ticket, he says, and you were tailgating a car back there as well. You know that, right? And there were no cars on the road. I'll yeah. tell you. I mean, they lie. They lie. Yeah. They outright the best, lie. The best, the best, best one is in the movies where the guy pulls the guy over and he says, uh, why'd you pull me over? And he walks to the back of the car, takes his baton out and smacks the guy's taillight and says, you got a broken taillight. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw that somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, uh, I, my best ticket ever was... Um, it was a Sunday night in Chicago, and I was driving back home, and a cop stops me, and he says, uh, uh, license and registration. So I got the registration, and my license was one of these little temporary licenses they give out in Illinois until you, they send you your real one, right? And I said, and here's my license. And they said, oh, that doesn't count, because in uh, in in, in uh, Illinois, we use your license as bail. Okay? In other words, they take your license from you, they give you the ticket, and you drive on the ticket. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And because I didn't have a legitimate Illinois license yet, they couldn't take my temporary license as bail, so they said, you're going to have to post bail. I said, it's Sunday night. And this is before ATMs, by the way. Let me mention that immediately. <laughs> and I go into my pocket. I've got like $2 in my pocket. I say to my <laughs> wife, Ronnie, uh, hey, Ronnie, uh, do, you, do you, have any, you have any change or anything? And she goes, no. He said, well, you've got to come down and post bail. We're going to have to put you in jail overnight. And I said, how much is bail? They said, $35. And I'm thinking, wow. you know, and in those days, $35 was uh, maybe like $100 today. So we, did, we go. We, the we, so we go down to the police station, and they say, "Well, listen, we're going to have to book you overnight until tomorrow morning, which is Monday, and then maybe you can get the money from somewhere." And I'm thinking, I don't want to spend my n a night in jail for a fucking ticket, you know. So Gosh. they're saying, if you you got to come, if you come up with the thirty five bucks, we can let you go. So I'm thinking, I look at Ronnie, and I go, Ronnie. You know those jars of pennies you've got at home? Yeah. <laughs> I said, you've got a license. Get in the car and go get them. And as I left the police department later on, these guys were still counting out the pennies. <laughs> they couldn't. They had to take them because it was cash, okay? <laughs> but they were going, one, two, three... And one other cop looked at me and said, you know, if I were you, I would have done the same goddamn thing. Well, at least you weren't arrested for dumping garbage on Thanksgiving. Excuse me, folks. I have an itch in my crotch. If anybody's wondering what I'm scratching down there. Hello, Kevin. Hi, Alex. How are you? I'm fine, Kevin. It's, it's Tuesday. It's another, it's another week here. Uh, he's a professional driver. I doubt he ever got a ticket. No, you never got a ticket, did you? I Kevin. never did. No. R really? <laughs> never got well, never got a moving violation. I got tickets for being overweight and, you know, what? Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. When you say <laughs> being overweight, being you mean over. having the truck having too much weight, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you meant yourself. 
no, no. no. That, that, then I'd have been in big trouble because that happened all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's... And, you know, uh, broken parts on the truck and that sort of thing. But never a moving violation. Never a moving violation. Knock on wood or... You know, I figure, it, like, if I travel across the United States, I spot myself one ticket somewhere. You know, just because the chances of you in 3,000 miles getting a ticket is pretty good, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I did get one coming back from New York once when I was coming back to retake my job at Live 105. I'd been living in Florida, and I was going through, um, through where was it? It was, uh, I think it was Colorado, the mountains, or Wyoming, the mountains in Wyoming. And this cop pulls me over, and uh, they gave me a ticket. And I found out that there was this one spot that if he, if I'd gone to a gas station, somebody would have warned me about where the cops always lay in wait because that was like their that was their honey pot for tickets. You know? There was a spot in Georgia. Let me let me move my picture a little bit so people can see um, uh, Kevin's so, face. Alex, there, there, there was a, sp a spot in Georgia called Ludowicki. And before yeah. the I-95 went through from New York to Florida, yeah. you had to drive on 301 in Georgia. And it went down to 25 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, I drove straight from New York. I was on my way to Miami. And uh, it was like maybe 3 in the morning. And I, I had a brand new Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme, 73. And I was going as fast as the car would go. And I get passed up by a Corvette and a Firebird, and uh, the cop pulls over the Corvette and the Firebird in this, in this, you know, if they would have pulled me over, it's 30 days in jail there for a New Yorker. And uh, 30 days and I, in jail for what? For just speeding? Speeding. But what? I was doing about 125. Oh, wow. And, That's reckless driving. And I, a 25. But I got passed. What, what by state was this cops. in? What state was this Georgia. in? Georgia. Oh, Georgia. Oh, no. That's the, no, 125 is the death penalty. Yeah, I know. <laughs> somebody with New York plates. And yeah, yeah. Uh, so as, as I'm going through there, I figured he, he when he pulls these two guys over, I figured he was pulling me over, too. I started to pull over, and then I realized he didn't want me. He only wanted the other two guys. So I just kept going. And uh, I, I saved myself 30 days in jail. 30 you know? days in jail in Georgia for a ticket? Now, I'm sure that's not true anymore. No, no, no. It, it's a speed trap. Ludowicki, Georgia, was known as a speed trap. And uh, that's... they. Yeah, but in lieu of 30 days in jail, couldn't you pay like been, a fine? It might have been $1,000. And at that time, I, I don't think I had $100 to my name. Really? Well, 125 is like reckless driving or something. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I was going as fast as the car would go. And, these, and, and the whole way down, these two guys were kind of playing, going past me. And it just so happens that they went past me and the cop grabbed them instead of me. Ludowicki, Georgia. Look it up. 301, yeah. Highway 301. This is in the early 70s when the I-95 didn't go all the way through. And oh, it was really? it was a known speed trap. Yeah, there's certain there's certain towns that they, they have that reputation. They exist, they exist on, on, on that. And they don't like New Yorkers. Well, obviously. Yeah. There was a, we were on a trip last year, and we were going through, we were just turning out of Nevada, going north towards Idaho, and there's a, what, a town called Lucky, I think it was called, or, yeah, it was Lucky, <laughs> and there's a, there's a, there's a, a casino in the middle of nowhere, and we were told by friends, don't speed through there, mm -hmm. because there's a speed trap, and it's like in the middle of nowhere, and you get your speed going, and all of a sudden, there's this casino a store and then nothing again mm -hmm. and sure enough we pulled in there and there was a cop sitting right there <laughs> wow. and we had slowed down and done our little 25 30 whatever it was through town and sped up and took through but there was there was a speed trap there in wow. sausalito i had a friend that was a cop there and they used to sit in front of zach's uh, uh the bar you remember that yeah. yeah it's a bar and they call it shooting ducks so at, at two in the morning, <laughs> yeah, they wait yeah. for the uh, drunks to come out of the bar, and then you know they get them. When, in Richmond, we never shot ducks. You know, we we had to get a guy. We were going to get him uh, legit. You know, uh, but um, 
as far as uh, Sausalito, uh, it was a nightly ritual just to sit out over by Zach. I, I was always hoping and praying that a cop would stop me for drunk driving. Yeah. Because, as you know, I just never drank. You don't. Right. You know, I was always the designated driver. Everybody else got loaded and said, Ben, will drive, you know. Uh, but well, I always wanted to get... you. I always wanted to get uh, stopped by a cop for, you know, drunk driving and then be kind of swerving a little bit and, you know, whatever. And then when they gave me the breathalyzer, they would be amazed. Well, so. uh, you know, uh, when they pull you over, they'll oftentimes ask you one of these statements like, uh, have you been drinking? And if you say yes, that gives them more probable cause to uh, continue the investigation. The same thing as the spontaneous statement, which is, Oh uh, yeah, I was. I'm sorry, I was speeding. I didn't realize it. You know those those you things. You know the, get, the, they get, do have a big problem. We were talking about this the, a couple of weeks ago, weren't we? About how uh, in the states where pot is legal now, I mean they can still arrest you for driving under the influence, but the ability to prove you're under the influence is what's difficult. They don't. You know, a breathalyzer doesn't work with pot. Yeah, I saw some article that. Uh, that uh, collisions were up or, or uh, uh, under uh, in Colorado, that uh, uh, fatalities were up like 121 percent. I don't believe it. I, and well, I'll tell you well, why. And I don't, our, if, so it, I don't if it is, it's up. not from pot. I'll tell you that right now. Because well, said since pot was well, legal. They, that, but you see, you're, 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 you're trying to attribute uh, that particular cause, that particular thing as being the cause. I happen to know through studies and uh, medical studies been done years ago, there was a thing called the Oregon Studies in which they tested how people could drive under the influence of marijuana and if they were any good at it. And it found that most people who were experienced at smoking pot actually could compensate. It was one of the few drugs you could compensate for the effects of and get behind the wheel of a car and pretty well negotiated without any real problems. Yeah, I actually remember how about that. All of those, you remember how, that test, those, right? Uh, yeah, I did, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't think that if if uh, if, if uh, deaths from driving have gone up, it's because of that. Um, yeah. Let me see. It's probably I, a combination, huh? Of drinking and smoking, and they're you know they're just catching them. Well, there's also. Yeah. Uh, uh, pharmace- uh, prescribed pharmaceuticals that can affect your driving, like tranquilizers and benzodiazepines yeah. and opiates. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, you're not supposed to drive under uh, those kinds of tranquilizers. Yeah, but, yeah. but a lot but of people, people don't, do it all the but time. A lot of people don't knew, know that. Shit. You know. What the fuck? Dot com, and this is the Daily Fro again. No, oh, wait a minute. What, what is that? The hell is I that? Know, it's a podcast, and it will Are you won't cheating? Count. Are you cheating on me? <laughs> <laughs> that was a ringtone. Uh, Daily yeah. fro. Go off the phone. Because... Ah, <laughs> it was me. It was uh, the Bluetooth, and uh, well, not Bluetooth. Uh, yeah, yes, Bluetooth. By the way, does anybody here have uh, have uh, Echo? No. no. Or as we call no. it, some people, some people actually uh, call it. Um, uh, what's the name you use to call it? Uh, uh, the Amazon name. The uh, Amazon uh, Alexa. They yeah. they call it the Alexa, but it really isn't. It's the Echo, and you say Alexa in order to make Echo do what you want it to do. Uh, but I call it Echo because if I call it Alexa, somebody might say, "Hey Alex," and then it will start. What do you want? <laughs> you know. So I use Echo. You have a choice. And uh, we're we're sitting there watching TV. And all of a sudden, Echo starts going. I don't really have an answer to that question. Oh, yeah. or, or the height of Mount Everest. Is, and I'm going, what happened? Does my, uh, does my echo have like uh, Alzheimer's or something? You know? <laughs> As you said, it's cheating on you. Well, they you found, know, they found listening to other things. that uh, they have a speaker in there and it is on, on Wi Fi. And I could call, if I have your phone number in it, I can call you, Phil, and talk to you using. Actually, if I use the spot I've got, I can actually call it using uh, the uh, the video uh, on Sk- uh, not Skype, but on like uh, FaceTime or whatever. Anyway, somehow some echoes are mistakenly hearing what's going on and transmitting it to people who are on your phone list. 
So they pick yeah. up their phone, and there you are, you know, talking over dinner in the kitchen with the with the echo on. Yeah. And I think you should have to tap something to make it. Uh, no, do sometimes you... it's just doing it by accident, and no, and, and Amazon That's... says we're trying, we're working on the problem. It's yeah. it has to do with the same issue they were having with the laugh. It picks up something and it starts listening. Yeah, yeah. I have a Google Home. It does that. So the, the the equivalent. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it just starts talking if it hears something on the TV or whatever. By the way, it sounds enough like "Hey Google" or "Hello Google." I will have to say that uh, the Google uh, speak uh, thing and Home. the and yeah. the and the and the echoes speech recognition far surpasses Siri. Oh God, yes. Siri I'm is like. So bad, it's ridiculous. A ten, a ten, nine out of ten times, when I say something to Siri, it doesn't understand what I'm saying or it says it wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. my, my spelling is bad, so I use Siri uh, uh, quite often because sometimes uh, the spelling is so bad when I'm typing that the spell check can't find it. But uh, oftentimes, I, get, I, you know, I say the word, yeah. And Siri gives me something else other than that. Yeah, well, anyway. I use the little the little keyboard mic. It works great. You know, like uh, when you're it, it's. I think it's a Google, <coughs> even though it's, yeah, it's on my Google. iPhone. It's Google, and, and you can. It, and it, I, yeah, it works great. Well, I yeah. all my me if somebody uh, messages me on uh, on uh, on what do you call it uh, Google or not even Google, but on uh, Facebook. I yeah. simply hit the speak uh, the microphone and talk everything. I don't I don't type out my messages anymore. You no, know, I, I type them. You I type just them, just them. say them. It, 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 unless it, it doesn't recognize the spelling on a word, and then I'll use the microphone. Well, you can spell out a word, you know. Yeah. And like I have a uh, uh, an Apple TV, and mm -hmm. I can use the Apple TV, and I can spell out my passwords and stuff into it. Anyway, yes, uh, uh, I noticed Jeff had his hand up. Uh, yeah, when I, when I uh, had my uh, stroke like 20 years ago, uh, mm -hmm. I started to use Google uh, because my uh, ability to speak was so bad. And yeah. at the same time, I couldn't write hardly anything. And I couldn't also, I don't know, I, I couldn't combine words easily. Mm -hmm. So I started using uh the, the Google system. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. was, okay, it, it kept me alive. Let's yeah. let's change the subject here. First of all, uh, uh, I adopted something that Phil is now going to say he came up with. Uh, of course, I heard that on the news. <laughs> uh, uh, that uh, you, I, you, ad you I adapted it. I decided on my news break that it's not I'm making it Trump free, but I am not going to mention Trump if it's just a another one of these look how stupid he was today if it's an important piece of news if it's an important thing like you know, he died oh that would be such good news uh he died <laughs> heart then, attack is then i'm going to then, uh, then i'll mention it i'll mention certain things that are you know but i basically i it, it's it's trump free news in that he has to do so like when he meets with uh What's his name? Kim Jong. Un. Uh, he will. I'll, I'll. I'll mention that. You know, because that's news. That's real, bona fide news. But I feel that because he so monopolizes the news cycle, that a lot of other news doesn't get, uh, uh, you know, m mentioned. Like you tune into MSNBC, and for you know the whole hour they're talking Trump this, Trump that, this that, the Mueller this, uh, and. It so monopolizes the news that let's say there is an important item and it's something out of Libya or something like that, uh, then you're not going to hear about it. And so I'm going to I'm going to make it a policy to not, you know, like I mentioned um, uh, Ivanka Trump uh, with her 13 patents in China that she got, you know, because I yeah. felt that was kind of important. You know, it was corruption in the White House. But anyway. I had a. I was listening to it uh, during bubbles, and uh, I didn't get to hear the whole thing because it was uh, time. Yeah. Uh, 
Did you mention anything about Italy and their uh, uh, possibility? Because the, the stock market went down today. In yeah, I'm mentioning that to tomorrow that there's uh, because of, the, of Italy. What's happening in Italy? Uh, they're talking about leaving the EU. Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. Why would that make the stock market go down? Uh, I, I think they're looking to the future. And, uh, you know, why, why does anything make the stock market do whatever it does? You know, uh, somebody farts in Fresno and uh, the stock market changes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yep. Anyway. Uh, you know, but this is what they're saying. I was watching uh, Fox Business News. Yeah. And uh, they, they were talking about the fact that the big drop, I think it was a 400-point drop in the Dow today. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was, uh, was due to this uh, Italian thing. Oh, are you trying the thing I'm going to try ears? because my ear tonight is uh, is bothering me from this. It's a uh, Q-tip. Oh, I, can, can I just use my finger? No. I can't. Well, maybe. I mean, you can try. I don't think it'll work. No. I can't get it open. <laughs> use a key. I don't have a key on me. Hmm. I've been called away. I'm gonna. I'll call back later. What do you mean? You, how, well, how have you been called away? Well, my wife wants me to come and eat with them. Oh, oh okay. just do it like we do. Eat in front of the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I never eat with my family anymore. Oh, okay. Be. All right. So, so how long will you be? Oh, we'll probably like twenty minutes. Okay, we'll see you in twenty minutes. All right. Okay. Enjoy yourself. That's, All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Save some for us. I will. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah. You don't have a uh, no. well, you can use cotton ball. I mean, here you know. I can. No, I can just use this. You can do that. There we go. There we it, go. Uh, it's soothing. It down. is kind of soothing. Yes. Ah, da, 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 da. Okay. My stock went way up. Your stock mm -hmm. went up. Yeah. Yeah. What, what mm -hmm. stock is that? Uh, I bought stock in Square a long time ago. Wow. I use Square for uh, my uh, little photography thing. My wife uses it for uh, for jewelry. We bought it when it was an IPO. 13 bucks. Well, I, uh, anyway, so I want to get to the, uh, I guess, uh, get to the elephant in the room today. Uh, uh, and that's the situation. Huh? I think I know where you're going. Where, where do you think we're going, Kevin? <laughs> Speaking of elephants. Y yeah. <laughs> oh, it's that the uh, the shaming of, uh, uh, what's her name, uh, Roseanne Barr? Uh, the uh, shaming? Making a racist comment and having her show canceled? Yeah, but what do you mean, what do you mean uh, shaming her? Uh, well, I, I, I started to refer to the Sarah Sanders thing uh, where uh, she was fat shamed and shamed for her eye and then I realized what you were talking about and changed mid sentence to Roseanne Park yeah well uh, that Michelle Wolf thing I I never heard of Michelle Wolf in my life has anybody here ever heard of Michelle Wolf no no I I'd never heard of Michelle Wolf before apparently she's some comic with a good agent mm -hmm. uh, and she wound up being the host on the uh, correspondence dinner because yeah. nobody wants to be the host anymore since the president isn't going to be there. So they went and they got an opening act. And uh, she then did said things about Sarah Huckabee Sanders and learned that having the job of being the host of the correspondence dinner is a thankless job. The next day, somebody is going to be unhappy with how you did it, no matter how good you did. Right? Uh, and it was Michelle Wolf. So she then has a, a weekly show on Netflix. So I figure, well, you know, I, I don't, I've never heard of Michelle Wolf before. I, I, let me watch her and see how good she is. She is fucking terrible. She is horrible. She has an annoying voice. She isn't funny. I don't know where she found bad writers like this, but she had the material was just lackluster. And and that's now I know who Michelle Wolf is, and I know to stay away from Michelle Wolf. But uh, yeah, so uh, it was the uh, elephant that or the Roseanne Barr thing. The Roseanne Barr thing is of course the elephant in the room. Uh, uh, in case people don't she know, she apologized. 
It but doesn't, you know it, what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That was so. stupid. Plain stupid. Look, stupid. Uh, I, I, the chances are she was, it was, the tweet was at midnight. Chances are she was drunk. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, uh, but here, here, I guess I, my take on the thing is, uh, to begin with, if I were ABC, I would not have gotten rid of the show. I would have gotten rid of her. I would have killed the character off, called the show The Connors, mm. and continued with it because, after all, you know, you've certainly got a fairly good actor in John Goodman because w the time that he died on that show, the next year the ratings went into the dumper. So you know who the real star is of that show. Do you think that possibly she owns a good portion of the show could, and it make, could, she can take the show to HBO or no, something? Nobody's taken that show. Nobody's no. taken that show. Not with her. No? Not with her. No. No. She's the Colin Kaepernick of TV. Well, no, she's not the Colin Kaepernick of TV. No. Nobody will hire him either. Well, no, but how well, is she, she, how is she the Colin Ka Kaepernick of of, of <clears throat> Alan Kaepernick was a shit disturber, and uh, but she uh, isn't. A sh this isn't shit disturbing. This was no, sheer she stupidity plain, on her part. Yeah, she just well, plain screwed up. She stuck I, her foot I in her mouth and swallowed it. I saw six video clips of other things that she had done, uh, like the uh, the Star Spangled Banner, but, which but uh, that was nowhere nowhere near what she did this time. That was just nowhere near what you did this time. Are you familiar this with the quote? Plain Are you familiar stupid. with the quote, uh, Phil? Uh, uh, yeah, something about uh, ch not chimpanzees. Uh, Planet of the Apes. She said Planet she. Apes. She yeah. basically she was talking about Valerie Jarrett, who was yeah. a former aide to President Barack Obama, and uh, the tweet read, "Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes had a baby equals VJ." Uh, Was it? You know, I don't think when talking about black people, you should uh, use the term ape in any that goes of back. That goes back to the Howard Cosell saying, look at that monkey run. But that was, believe it or not, on, on, um, on, on Cosell's part. He was talking part, about simians? It, no, it was loving. It was a kind of a loving statement. Look at that little monkey and it go. It was a different time. Look at the time it was. And it was a different... Today, he'd never work again. Wasn't, wasn't never would have gotten away with that uh, shit now. It was a guy, something the Greek. Uh, Jimmy the uh, Greek. And Jimmy yeah. the Greek... No, Jimmy the Greek was... I don't think he was wrong in what he said. What he said was the reason why blacks are very good at athletics and sports is because it was bred into them to be strong. And it's right. true because... Yeah. The slave owners did breed slaves like they were animals. In other words, they bred them for strength and so on. What and, happened to Jack? And, and, he and but he got he they, they completely. He, Jimmy the Greek never saw television again. Oh yeah, no, right. they crucified and Howard him. Cosell ended up going on. Oh yeah, well Howard right. Howard he, he wasn't blackballed or anything. Well, because yeah. the because the term he got, he got berated, but the term could be taken in two oh, ways. Jimmy the Greek right. really right. Got, lost his job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jimmy the Creek got yeah. yeah, he was he was, yeah. he was he was fucked big time. Yeah. But uh you know, I uh, to begin with, I what I what I dislike about this. Let me say what I dislike about this and please folks, don't think in any way I'm defending Roseanne Barr, who I knew years ago and was a friend of mine and at that time I felt was a rather decent human being but somewhere along the line went crazy okay and then she fucked over another good friend of mine tom arnold so you know uh it, it, it it's a um but anyway that being the case don't think i'm defending roseanne and what she said she has to take the hit for what she did say and i don't care if she said i apologize when she suddenly realized that the heat was going to come down on her, she shouldn't have said it in the first place. All right. Twitter's taken a lot of people down. Huh? Has, Twitter has taken a lot of people down. Uh, they, uh, taken themselves down. I well, mean, of course. But, you know, uh, nobody, nobody's, nobody's to blame more than Roseanne. But my feeling is, is that, first of all, she's a cunt. And she's a cunt because when you're running a show like that, 
And I realized it just running a little show in San Francisco where I had about 10 people who worked with me that I always felt the pressure that I had to do well because nine other people's jobs depended upon me. Right. And, and if I were out, they were out. Okay. Right. So for me to act selfishly and do things that would get me fired or whatever was not even in the cards. She should be have been more careful out of respect for the people who were working for her. Like, there were 200 people involved with the production of that show. I believe that's what brought out the apology so quickly. She probably realized she did that and said, oh, shit, I, I, just because I did that, maybe causing people other jobs. Mm -hmm. yeah. she, and she realized she did that and then threw out the apology, knowing that she screwed up, and then it was too late. Yeah, some people have big mouths, you know. Yeah, well, but see, this is a good a, analogy uh, uh, was I heard someone uh, say it, and I think it was actually on Fox. Yeah, it it, it it's the Twitter it's the Twitter uh, mentality, the social social media, whatever. That's something you say to somebody on the street, your neighbor standing out in front watering your lawn. You know, it gets that far, but when you say it on Twitter, it's all over the place. Once you push, you commit the, yeah, look, social Jeff, suicide. Jeff has his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Well, I, I think that somebody who has that kind of a job, and and who gets, you know, a whole, uh, like you say, there's 200 people who work on that project together. Mm -hmm. She's she's got to take responsibility for her own stuff, and the fact that she said, "Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that." I don't think she was uh, as sensitive as she should have been. Listen, I don't think she sensitive. could have kept her mouth shut in the beginning. Yeah, and, yeah. And it would have been a problem. Well, apparently, and it was apparently, not I, anything that yeah. was that difficult to to make that decision. I'm just wondering if there were more problems before this that they were finding difficult, because they sure made this decision fast, and this decision is a decision that would have cost them next year. Sixty million dollars in ad revenues. They All did right. say that she was she was cut loose on a lot of stuff that she had tweeted before, and they they were really watching it closely, and that she had tweeted some things that were borderline, and they kind of were watching it. And I don't know what they were, but she was kind of walking the line, and this kind of okay. Went over now, the line. Let's let's ask ourselves for a moment. Why did ABC cancel this show? Because they love black people and they believe in the uh, dignity of mankind and they don't like somebody who abridges that dignity? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think ABC has that kind of conscience. They got rid of her because they didn't want it to hurt the rest of the brand. PC. PC, and uh, PC, I, you know, I, 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 so they, they did it to make themselves look good in the face of what was a terrible, terrible thing. But let's remember, yeah. these people hired her knowing exactly what they were getting. You know, she, mm -hmm. she was not apologizing for her politics. She was not suddenly being really, you know, goody two shoes so that the show could get on the air. She just kept being Roseanne, so they knew what they were buying. So how yep. dare ABC sit around and cancel this show to save their own fucking ass? Because they're complicit in this. It was almost like there was a line in the sand, and she kept walking it, and they were waiting. You know, if she goes over that line, boom, go on. How much you want to bet in two weeks and a little bit of PR, it's back on the no, air? No, oh, no, oh, no. Oh, this is going. I don't think so. This is going, I, Phil. You know, this no, is I, absolutely... No question about it. Gone. I think what it's going to do is it's going to raise their ratings and no, uh, no. It believe me, I'm telling you right now that that that's not going to happen. They have canceled this show. That this show is gone. Mm -hmm. Now you know they wanted to have her take the pro-Trump thing out of the show, and she then refused to do it. No, uh, that wasn't the case at all. In fact, they said they were going to, and she was fine with that, that next year yeah. they were going to have she, less politics. However, look, to begin with, I've watched the show. 
In fact, yeah. I will be very happy to admit I like the show. So did I. Yeah. Uh, I, I felt that it was a well-written comedy. And yeah. so far as being pro-Trump, it wasn't pro-Trump. It wasn't anti-Trump. It was pro-Trump where she was concerned and liberal where her sister was concerned. And the subject matter that they were dealing with were things like being able to afford health care. I mean, I thought it was a good show, and I thought that it was bringing up some good dialogue, okay? Yeah. So this notion that everybody has out there that this show was a, was a right-wing show, it was out of their fucking mind. They didn't watch the show. But the show yeah. I watched wasn't that. Yes, Jeff? I never read, I never listened to the show. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a major part of the problem is that a lot there's so many different shows on tv these days that the abc nbc cbs have become now what small potatoes i'm going to tell you what i i saw today about this story that disappointed me is that i have watched the show and i do know what the 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 politics of the show is which is no politics at all she has her politics on the show. Other people have other politics on the show. The subject matter has to do with people who are working class people trying to survive. Uh, and and uh, uh, sometimes uh, those, that, that was about whether they could, the big one was about whether they could get health care or not, you know, and that she didn't have health care and, and she needed yeah. a knee operation and they couldn't afford the $3,000. Um, and, and John Goodman couldn't get a union uh, job because his price was too high. He was getting underbid by, uh, uh, well, what, whatever. Anyway, I, that wasn't what they were saying. What it was was he couldn't make, uh, couldn't bid and make a profit if he didn't hire like illegal aliens. Okay. Right. Well, or you yeah. know, non-union. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, but anyway, the that that's not the point. The point I'm making is I'm watching TV tonight. And I think it was NBC, and they said, and she was let go because, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then they showed clips from the show, and the only clips they showed were her saying how wonderful Trump was. Yes. Yes, I was. You, I was did you see that? that? And the yeah, fact I, was that that was the not. The first couple of shows, that's it. And, and, the, and they, the, that was only a small part of the show. And that, then they were showing how Trump was boasting about how good the show was. And you haven't heard a word about it. Trump boasting yeah. about how good that show is. If you is want since. me to defend that show, I think it was a good show. It was well written. And when it came to dealing with social issues, it melded comedy with social issues. And you haven't heard Trump boast about it since. Oh, he hasn't said a word about it now. In the, yeah. In, in so all it's, all, it's become very even. And he hasn't said, oh, look how good that show is because it's I, become very even. I think he's got better things to do right now. Well, he probably because he doesn't watch it now, or they, he doesn't they, want to they announced, say how good it is. They announced that next year uh, they were going to take the politics out of the show. My That's fear, right. My fear was yeah, when they said that. Out of there. I heard it, Roseanne Barr say that she wasn't going to allow that. No, I didn't see anything no, about that. No, no they were writing it out of there. They were. That's they were, what they uh, said. But I heard, I heard her say that uh, they can say what they want, but I'm not going to do that. Well, uh, uh, that's no. not what we—that's not what I heard. I didn't hear She's ever not, say anything. She, like she that. doesn't really have much to say about it. Yeah, um, and there were some problems there. The showrunner from the show was leaving, and so on and so forth. Hello, Jack. How are you? This Hello evening? there. Hello there. Well, also, not only was the show producer leaving, but Wanda Sykes left last week. No, she yes. didn't leave last week. Left was it today. not last week? No, she left, left today. today. Yeah. I, I thought it was in, last in, week. In the light of this situation. But, uh, you know, done. Alex, as you pointed out, though, you know, they knew what they were getting. And uh, they're trying to save face. The, the thing that I'm disappointed in is the focus is shifting off of the tweets. And would that the great um, Sherman Hensley or Red Fox or Slappy White was around because they would say, hey, I challenge you to a game of what of what I know Phil Myers knows about the dozens, which starts out with your mama. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Here's it's the so thing. fat. <laughs> let me go back to let me go back to NBC and then the way they were misreporting the story today. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I tuned in MSNBC about 3 o'clock right after this story broke. And they've got a panel. And their panel are like three black guys. Uh, yeah, I noticed the same thing. Yeah, yeah. One of them is Mark Thompson, who I used to work with over at uh, Sirius XM, who, you know, is such a radical that he's not even using his African name, which he used to use all the time. <laughs> Which oh, you mean he quit that? The Matsumilla, or yeah, you know, that, whatever, yeah. Mafume or something. Yeah. No, yeah. He's, he and Mark Thompson from Sirius XM. Anyway, I'm sitting there watching this, and they just finished with Al Sharpton. Uh, and I'm thinking to myself, where's the white guy in this group? Where's the, <laughs> where's the comedian, for instance, who wants to say something like, well, you know, maybe, you know, she should be allowed her freedom of speech and her tweets and it shouldn't be, you know, somebody who had a slightly different opinion of this. But no, these were all people who were going, see, we can't let this kind of thing go on. And it was the most skewed hour of television. Was it Craig uh, Melvin? Was, it was no, no, it, it was right? Katie Turr. It was Katie Tour who was hosting. Oh, I saw Craig Melvin. So it, oh, was, it was like, oh, do not adjust your set. Oh, oh yeah, that, but that was with Al Sharpton, you yeah. know. And I mean, it, I'm not, I'm not, it, it was just strange to me. It looked strange. Yeah, yeah. And they, they asked uh, Valerie, what's her name? Uh, Valerie. Jarrett. Jarrett. Yeah. Uh, uh, what she thought on this, uh, this uh, what do you call it? Uh, this uh, town hall they were having. Yeah, yeah. CNN was having. And, and, and she said, well, the, and I hate it when they say this. Well, this, I really am not upset by this. It should be used as a learning moment. Fuck yeah. you with your fucking yeah. learning moment. This yeah, is yeah. not a learning moment. This awesome is a moment her. in which you see a woman visibly crash her career. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts yeah. and prayers. It's a, the, the learning moment I have, keep my tweets to myself. You know, I mean, that's my learning <laughs> moment out of this. That's right. Yes, well, yes, Jeff. What I want to know is why do we give a shit anyway? Good question. Good answer. You know? Why do we give a shit anyway? Well, we give a shit because uh, this is obviously, you know, it. it's interesting to me that what she wrote was, it, 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 was, it was not right. It was very wrong, okay? Yeah. Uh, if what she meant is what it looks like, you could also say it's kind of like the I Ching. You throw it down, it leads you to a page that has a phrase, and then you decide from that what your fortune is, you know? Every, everybody makes their own decision. But uh, let's say the worst comes to the worst on this. My question still is, does she not have the right in this society to, to be able to say what she wants to say and not have this kind of consequence? You get not what I'm if saying? it affects her employers uh, negatively. And uh, the, the same thing... Well, no, but, but you see, the lawyer, what I'm saying is here... ABC doesn't give a shit about black people. ABC doesn't give a shit about uh, whether you, you know, you call them monkeys or not, you know. But the minute, yes. the minute it looks like it's going to cost you money, all of a sudden you love black people and you're standing up for them and this person can't say this about you. Do you think, uh, Jack, you're black. Do you think mm -hmm. ABC yeah. what? really? What? what? Do you, Are do you sure about that? Do you think ABC <laughs> gives, gives a shit about black people? Well, I worked for the NBC O and O TV station here for about five years, yeah. and I damn sure knew that NBC didn't. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think that ABC was any better, probably worse under Disney. I'll tell you what Mark Thompson said to me once. He he always used to call me up, and you know he was always worried about losing his job, and he had to negotiate and do things like this and that. And he would call well, me, and I would he give him. He should have worried. He I, wasn't that good. I, I would give him advice. Right, you know, mm -hmm. and and that uh, do you think you? I hear from him anymore? Haven't heard from him in three years. Met him up, one, met up with him one day at Apple, and he said, "I'll call you." I never heard from him anyway, so fuck him. But he said to me once, he said, "I don't know." He says, I, "You know, I'm up for my contracts up for renewal. Do you think they'll renew me?" And I said, "Of course they will." He said, "Why are you so sure?" I said, "Let me put this as nicely as I possibly can. You're the minority hire." I said you could go in and shit on their desk and they wouldn't fire you. 
Well, speaking as somebody who some other people thought was the minority hire, yeah, at uh, a couple of radio stations, yeah, and at a TV station. Well, you were definitely st- you were definitely the minority hire at James Brown's radio stations. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you a story and about I think that. On GabNet as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You see, I was converted to Judaism at one time. So yeah, but, but the point the point party. I'm making point I'm making is is that uh, uh, you know uh, today um, I just, th- these companies care about what the perception is by the public of them, but they really don't give a shit about the people they say they're trying to protect. They're trying you to saying help. they're phonies. I'm saying that ABC hired Roseanne. They knew her past. They knew the things she said. I was surprised they even gave her a fucking show again. You know, with all the history that she's had with tweeting and with jokes she's made and controversy she's had. I was surprised they even hired her at all. And then I was even more surprised when this thing was just the blowout hit of the season. They couldn't believe how big this show was. It well, was, you got to remember, Alex. It, uh, it was big for uh, about half its run. Then it kind of settled into being okay ratings, you know. But, Alex, you got to remember, it's the temper of the times. We're yeah. not living in normal times in this country. Yeah. Not anything like we were just a few years ago. Would uh, Roseanne have lost her job uh, 10 years ago if she had written this somewhere? Said this somewhere? Uh, I think so how about 15 15 years ago probably not okay so what we're doing is we're we're literally prisoners of the zeitgeist as it were Mm. yeah so i'm going to get myself a twitter account because i'm going to post on my twitter account that roseanne's moral compass dripped down her mother's leg and see what happens then are you going to fire me alex (laughs) Uh, well, we'll have to see if we lose any advertisers. Oh, <laughs> maybe we might gain some. Precious, you know? precious little chance of that happening, Jack. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I just feel that uh, it's, it's that you're, you're protesting too much. You're trying to solve the problem by, you know, it, it, let's face it, she, it has not been. Okay, and I don't know where she was at the time that that tweet went out. But Mm -hmm. let's say she was on the East Coast. Let's just say that for grins. It's been less than 24 hours since that tweet went out. That show has been canceled. 200 lives have been ruined. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and ABC didn't even blink twice about doing it because they were more afraid of what the perception of ABC would be if they simply rebuked her. Well, sure. If sure. they're trying to fire her, and they at least they did it quickly, so that they can't accuse them of not, uh, you know, uh, waiting for the reactions mm-hmm. and then uh, 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 firing her. They that whole thing happened within it. two hours. I, think. I know, but they got out in front of it. They made a decision, and yeah. uh, and that's the deal. Yeah, isn't that called yeah. crisis management now? I think yeah, something like Pretty that. Much. Yes, uh, Jeff. I think that and somebody else mentioned it before, and I, I just the more I've heard about it, it was pre-planned that they were disappointed with her and all the problems with her, uh, and they probably told her, "Listen, if you do more, another." Oh, time I'm sure with, there was a discussion like, "If you do more of this kind of stuff, I'm sorry, you're you know. out." Yeah, there she was and walking a line in the first place, and her and her attitude that line. Her attitude probably was, and she knows television pretty well, having gone through it on at least one or two occasions. Um, uh, she knew that her her ego was telling her, this show is so fucking big, and she's right, it was so fucking big, that they're not going to cancel me because of anything I say. You know, I can shit on their desk. All right? Mm-hmm. And she was wrong. <laughs> you know? Yes, think Ray, help Ray, Ray just Allen joined show? us. What? Do you think this will help the Tim Allen show that's supposedly coming back? <laughs> Good question. Yeah. Now, Tim Allen, though, is a smarter guy. Yeah, he Tim, won't Tim, say shit like that. Yeah, he won't. He, you know, she, she, but uh, Ray, what do you, since you're back from dinner, how was dinner, by the way? 
It was delicious. Oh, good. It was delicious. It was chicken cooked uh, in a French style with the French I sauce. See. I'm making fresh you know what, I, what I have Co- all ready to um, go to go in the slow cooker tomorrow morning uh, is a beef bourguignon I'm making. Oh, yum. B- beef bourguignon. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> it may help the, uh, all the family revamp, revamp come back. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. true. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, yeah, but yeah, what, no what, kidding. What you're thinking about the Roseanne thing? What was Roseanne. your reaction to it? I think I think that Roseanne has a streak in her that is just like fuck you. I'm going to do what I want. Mm. Uh, I re- I remember when she was when she sang the uh, the national anthem and like grabbed her crotch and spit on the ground, you know, and people were yeah. like chastising her for two years after that mind you she, she just like doesn't give a shit She's, and the more the more people tell her she can't do something the chances of her doing it are exponentially higher let me let also, me tell you let me tell you let me tell you let me tell you we went crazy though when uh was it janet jackson showed a nipple and she did and she uh, okay. was all adorned with let like me, metal let me let, let me let me tell you a quick and, let me tell and you. justin timberlake was the one yeah. who ripped the thing off let me tell you a story. Man. Let me tell you a story here. Years ago, yeah. Yeah, years ago, I'm doing my show in San Francisco. I'm at the Quake at the time. It's a station. And this woman I know named Gail, it's, it's the comedy competition it's, it's in San, going on in San Francisco. And a friend of mine named Gail uh, just brought this woman to the show to watch the show and sat her down in one of the chairs that we had there for the studio audience. And uh, during a break, uh, introduced me to her and said, this is uh, my friend. She's come into town for the comedy competition. And I'm kind of putting her up at my place because she was sleeping. She was actually sleeping on the floor, floor of a guy called the Amazing Jonathan. He had a van, a truck, a big truck van thing. And she was sleeping in it. And she said, I couldn't stand to see her do that. So I, I'm putting her up at my place. And she said, her name is Roseanne Barr. And... Uh, <laughs> And I, I said hello to her, and we talked a little bit. And yeah, can you talk back to me? And I'm going, yeah, I don't know how this woman can be funny, you know. So <laughs> I mean, I would have asked her on the show, but I don't know whether she's funny or not. So I didn't put her on. I didn't, I didn't ask her to join the show. But she sat there enjoying it herself and was very happy, you know. And after the show, Gail, I, and her went out to breakfast, and for about three or four days running, we took. Roseanne out to breakfast because if we hadn't, Roseanne would have starved. Okay, literally. That's how b- dead broke she was. Sleeping on the floor of the van of, uh, of, of the amazing Jonathan and then taking breakfast from me, which has got to be the most disgusting thing you have to do in your life. So, <laughs> so now th- this happens. One night I'm sitting there and I'm watching the Johnny Carson show. And he says... Now, ladies and gentlemen, brand new comic, please welcome Roseanne Barr. <laughs> and I go, wait a minute, is this a fucking Roseanne Barr who I didn't figure could possibly be funny? Because Missed she didn't, that one. She didn't, yeah, <laughs> she didn't present herself to me as funny, so I never really put her on the show. And out comes Roseanne Barr, and everybody remembers this set she did where she just killed. You saw a career made that very moment, all right? Now, I want to show you how nice this woman was, okay? Now she goes on, she gets a TV show. It's the Roseanne Show. It's now the number one show in television, all right? She is now, I think, married to Tom Arnold. They come back to San Francisco on a vacation, and I get a call. Hi, Alex, this is (laughs) Roseanne. This is Roseanne. I know. Uh, I said, hi, Roseanne. Boy, I'm so happy for you and the way your career has gone. And she says, thank you very much. She says, I want to come on and do your show. And I said, why? And she said, because you were so nice to me and took care of me when I had nothing. And she and Tom came on the show, and she came and did the show with me. Uh, and, And she thanked me so much. She said, you had a lot to do with my career because when nobody believed in me, you you helped me out. And she came in and did this, out, went out of her way to call me when she was in San Francisco to say, I want to do your show and do you the favor of having me on now. And that's the Roseanne I remember, okay? Yes, uh, first Jack and then uh, Ray. But didn't you blame yourself for exposing the world to Tom Arnold? No, Tom's a great guy. I, I thought you said that one time. He's did a you great guy. Were... A, no, I didn't expose Tom. Tom Arnold was... 
Tom Arnold was uh, an also ran comedian, and then he met up with Roseanne, and he got better known. I got to know Tom at that point very briefly, and then and later on, uh, years later, got to know him more and have nothing but the greatest respect, and I like Tom a lot. No, oh, okay, I stand corrected. I, yeah. That's what I get for listening to you and believing what you say. What do you mean? I never say anything. I would never say anything bad about Tom Arnold. You didn't say anything bad about Tom Arnold. You said, "I blame myself for it." Oops, pardon me. That's my that's my alarm telling me I've got to get ready to do a show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Twenty minutes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I remember one time you said that you viewed yourself as being responsible for uh, introducing the world to Tom Arnold. No. But hey, no. I, I no. like I said, I'm I, I was probably. I was probably listening with one ear. I, I introduced the world to a few people, but not Tom Arnold. Yeah. Okay. All right. I stand corrected. I will go stand over in the corner yeah. and uh, wear the dunce cap. Yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> you know. That isn't until Amy gets here, and I'll pass it over to her. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I, I just wanted to right. say, I, I have a lot of, I give Roseanne a lot of leeway. Um, I heard her, it was either, I think it may not have been on Mark Marin's park podcast or something else where she was being very open man she had it rough her father sent her to some mental hospital and she basically grew up in a mental hospital because her parents didn't want to deal with her um hmm. I mean yeah, she I've, had a really a too, yeah. really really rough time and she had to like escape from the mental hospital which is why she had nothing like you said Alex yeah, yeah. um and and when you and when she's talking and being candid, she's the nicest, most genteel uh, person you could talk to. And so when I hear stuff like this, I get really confused. Well, I, I you know, that, that that's the confusion I have now that later on, I would imagine it was like two or three years later, I got a hold of her people down in L.A. and I said, I want to talk to her. I want to have Roseanne call the show and talk to her just, you know, because I hadn't talked to her in a while. And uh, her people got back to me and she said, she doesn't know who you are. Hmm. Now, I don't know what happened to her during that time, but, you know, there was a time there where I liked her a lot. She was really a nice I, person. It might have been her people that didn't know who you are. You know what I mean? No, no. It was, I got the impression she just, you know, she didn't, she didn't know who I was. And I think she... She was mentally, this was during the whole Tom Arnold thing. I could tell you stories about that because my friend David Feldman was writing, it was in the writer's room, was a punch-up guy for Roseanne and was there when they would go out into the parking lot and have these huge fights, these incredible fights. And uh, uh, in fact, on that show, it's David Feldman who plays the preacher with his back to the camera marrying Becky, I think, on the show. Uh, hey, so hey but, where but, is Feldman these days? I don't know. I don't care. I think he's here in New York somewhere. Oh, he's okay. turned into a fucking asshole. Really? So, yeah, oh. yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, 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 and, and I've done nothing to him. He just, you know, avoids me and, you know. He, I found out he was here for a year and he never called me. He was living out here for a year and never called me. I hate when people do that shit. Yeah. Yeah, and, oh, and Feldman was like, I mean, I'm talking about when you have a good friend, Feldman was my good friend. I know, right. I know. Yeah. 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 Well, this is the nature of our business, you know. Uh, uh, you know something? I, uh, you know something? I'll tell I've you. I've had it happen to me. Irv, I came to the conclusion a few years back, I can be disappointed by behavior like this, or I can just figure it's par for the course, and when somebody does something otherwise, like Roseanne in that particular situation that I told you about, you say, hey, that's nice. Good for them. They turned into a decent person. But don't expect them to turn into decent people because this business, after a while, turns most people into an asshole. You know? So yep. you got to expect there's a, there, there, There's a guy here who I worked with back in the 80s when he was just getting to a uh, top-tier station here in this market. And... Uh, we were good friends. As a matter of fact, I even bailed him out of jail one night when he uh, got arrested for DUI. And uh, two years ago, he came back to the market 
and I call as program director of the station that we had both worked at. And I called and, and left a message, not looking for a job, just want to welcome you back and, you know, buy you lunch now that you're back home. Son of a bitch has yet to call me. Well, I, you know, I, I feel the same way as I told you about Mark Thompson or Matsumil Mafumo or whatever his name is. Um, uh, he, uh, when they, it when, was Malto when, Meal Mafumo. When they were thinking of hiring him, they said, we want, we're going to put him over on the, 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 they had like a black channel or something. Yeah. And I said, I wouldn't do that. And I, and I said, they said, why not? I said, why do we consider radio so segregated? I said, put him, put him on our, our main liberal channel. I said, let him be with the, play with the rest of the white guys, you know? I said, that, that's, that's, you're not doing something wonderful by hiring for the black channel, okay? But you would be doing something wonderful by putting it. And I got him a really good job not being on the black channel where he had to go there and you know tap dance for the rest of his life and do you think i ever hear from this guy no zero does he, he did show. that for him? huh does he know you oh did yeah that? he knows i did that for him yeah there he was told well, the, question, the question i asked how came he didn't do something like that for me you son of a bitch well <laughs> <you've not> even, <laughs> well quite frankly because you're uppity anyway oh, up, uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> Listen, I, there's more that, to this uh, story about Roseanne. This this really gets even more interesting. Now, remind, remember, we're still maybe 15 minutes away from 24 hours, if we consider that midnight was in New York, although it was probably in California, so it's way less than 24 hours. Uh, this story came out several hours ago. TV outlets have been scrambling to distance themselves from Roseanne in the wake of the controversial tweets by Roseanne Barr, the show's star, following ABC's cancellation of his hit uh, Roseanne reboot, reruns of the series have been pulled from Paramount Network, TV Land, CMT, and Laugh. Oh, jeez. I mean... You think she used the casting couch? Huh? <laughs> You think maybe she used the casting couch, and that's why... It uh, says, laugh, acting, laugh, L-A-F-F. -F. I never heard of that channel. Released a statement today which says, while we believe viewers have always distinguished the personal behavior of actress Roseanne Barr from the television character Roseanne Connor, we are disgusted by Barr's comments this week. Therefore, we're moving the original Roseanne series from the laugh schedule for the time being effective immediately. Now, what do you think? So they're pulling it, it, uh, everything. I mean, this is, is this not going too far? That, that's kind of crazy. I mean, I mean, they did this. pulling everything. Uh, they, they, they did the, listen, if Nickelodeon keeps doing this, um, or TV Land keeps doing this, they're going to have no shows left because they pulled Cosby a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, what's the answer here? I mean... Is this? Are people just trying to save their asses? Is this what this is all about? Yes. The, yeah, but what kind of yeah. what kind of advertising are they saving on on Nickelodeon, and what kind of advertising are they saving on Laugh Channel? Who knows? Cheetos. Laugh says it's well, the country's it's first ever over-the-air broadcast television network devoted to comedy around the clock. What what, what is uh, what is uh, it, uh, what, what's uh, what do you call it? The uh, comedy channel. Comedy Central. What's that? Wasn't that a twenty-four hour a day comedy channel? Uh, oh, I, don't know. I mean, not how quickly they forget. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't even know. They say they run, uh, but uh, so anyway. Oh, oh, oh! Here's the worst. You ready for the worst? How many of you here have Hulu? Anybody have Hulu? I got. No, I got I Hulu. I got it, and I buy it commercial free, so I don't have to watch any commercials on it. I, I figured, hey, you know, there are a couple of episodes of. Roseanne, I didn't watch yet. I'll go back and watch him. John. I will not be able to. Hulu has decided to take it off the streaming platform and will be dropping the show. So the existing oh, Jesus. shows... Well, then I got a DVR. It's probably worth money. I can sell it. The, ex <laughs> the, the existing show... You, you can download from the back of the DVR. There's usually a little firewire. I think I'm going to download all the... I know where to get copies of it. Uh, but... I mean, Hulu has removed, Torrent. literally removed a show which has been on there 
so it, you know what, what's question, gonna happen that's, be, that's a pc issue yeah but i mean what do they think is going to happen if they have roseanne on their channel that god is going to send a thunderbolt down to get them or something yeah. what this is group think you know yeah. it, it's it they're all piling on yes i think Right. It is. I, I would just like to say, I think the whole thing, even just pulling the show off whatever network it was on, I don't know, I never watched it, uh, is was an overreaction. I mean, she's sitting there uh, this morning or whatever. She thought of something she thought was funny. She tweeted it out. She realized she screwed up. She apologized. And then they just fucked her over. I mean, I think it's just it's the whole thing is a complete overreaction. Well, it's no, it's saving your ass time is what it is it is yeah it is prejudging what the public is going to think if you keep yeah. the show on the air she apologized before they pulled the show well uh, yeah i know yeah that's but what i'm saying the, i mean it's she, the whole she thing she apologized is ridiculous. she apologized only after she got some heat from twitter well, well, well that's okay well, well here's the thing yeah, but, here's the know, thing that was, the, again that thing a whole thing only took an hour she she posted it she she probably got nudged on the couch she was sitting from that she posted it. I'm sure somebody was sitting next to her going, boy, you just fucked up. I don't know if you said, should have said that. And she pulled it back pretty quickly. And I'm sure that she was getting shit from Twitter back. And well, and she pulled it back. And then it seemed like not even an hour. Why? And the, the show was gone. Yeah, my question is, why in the world? Did they, didn't they just say, okay, Roseanne, come into the office, let's talk about this. And say, yeah, wait a minute, you know. and say, wait a minute, and say, uh, we want you to get out there and we want you to make a full retraction of this and an apology to all amount of concern that uh, maybe you were drunk when you did it or whatever. That just, was surprising to me, too. You, you know, know, allow least, her, a, uh, yeah. Add that into it, you know. What, what, Jeff's going no. I I don't I don't believe that. I think that uh, whoever the corporate people who makes that decision, they said, you know what? If she says one more stupid thing, and I'm looking forward because I want to get rid of her. Well, and well just, yeah, yeah, it's the same thing I was saying earlier. She may have been walking the line already, and they may have told her that ahead of time. I believe it, because I, I, I got to know But that. you I, look at it, I, and that's the same own, thing that Trump so does. He gets so on there awesome. and fire by, fire by Twitter. Well, this is a fire across the bow by Disney that nobody better fuck with them, because no matter how much money you make them, you're not dispensable. Yeah, that's Not right. indispensable, rather. That's exactly it. And when you hire somebody like Roseanne, a comedian like that, who's on the edge, who probably has a few mental illnesses, you got to expect she's going to, once in a while, fuck up. And, and I they, mean, they, I, it's a, huh? they did. They publicly said that they were watching her and what she was doing and that she had already walked the line a few times. They publicly said that. Yeah, and everybody knows that she does everybody that. Everybody knows that well, she's done well, that. But did they oh, read yeah. it? Wait a minute, guys. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. We go through periods of time where the society is extremely sensitive to everything. Remember. Yeah. Yep. Uh, um, she's a comedian. Remember, Lenny Bruce went to jail in San Francisco. If That's you right. can yep. get arrested for being yep. obscene in San Francisco, it was some pretty touchy times. Yeah. 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 Well, we're in those times again. Yeah, well, people I'm, like Roseanne are going to get nailed. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, all I'm saying is, is that I, 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 I really find ABC objectionable in all of this, only because they are trying to save their own asses, and they don't try to make me believe you love black people, okay, and that you're doing yeah. this for the black people. No, you're doing this for the bottom line at ABC. This decision was made by Bob Iger. Do you know how top that is at ABC? That's Win. the top. That's the guy yep. who runs the movies, runs the television, runs everything. I think the reason yeah. was because they knew that they were closing down Starbucks for several hours because of racial insensitivity, and uh, they wanted to jump on the bandwagon. Well, so that again was an, uh, that, that was a, again another case of a company 
t doing something not because they really cared, but because they wanted to assuage the public. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, four I hours, four hours of sensitivity training uh, um, uh, is bullshit. Okay, I you know, needed a bente latte. I don't know that those people don't care. I, I think that maybe they really do care, and uh, it cost them twelve million dollars. Oh, and, twelve million dollars uh, to Starbucks? That's a lot of money, isn't it? <laughs> well, it could be. Yeah. Uh, that's three lattes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe if they lower their prices. Well, anyway. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Jeff. Sorry, right, everybody went the ones in Safeway anyway. Uh, Jeff. <laughs> uh, I again, I want to say that I've had this this own kind of relationship with corporate people and. Uh, you know, you can be creative and you can be smart and you can be the greatest person in the world. When they're ready to get rid of you, you're gone. Yeah, they don't give a shit. It's happened shit to me. At all. Twice. Goodbye, get the fuck out of here, and your name's off the list. Yep. Bye. That's right. That's, That's right. right. Yeah, they don't 100%. care what you've done in the past, they don't care what you could do for them in the future. They don't care. Yeah. Because they, they get they, they want the power and they're going to exercise it. Uh, yes, uh, Jack. I did that. Oh, oh. I'd like to say, I'd like to take this time to say to Mr. Iger, if you want to do something for black people, the name is Jack Bishop. <laughs> available. <laughs> I'll make you a hell of a no. deal. Jack. And I was born a, a poor black child. I was born but a Jack. <laughs> we know that you're black. <laughs> We, we know that you're... Well, uh, you, 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 you forget, ladies and gentlemen, I'd trump you all. Because my <laughs> real name is Schwarzman. And you know uh, what the, right. and you know what the uh, translation of that is? Black man. <laughs> well, I would use my own real name, except for one thing. Nobody ever spells it right. What is your real name? If I tell you, I'll have to kill you. Wait a minute. Oh, Wait a minute. I, know your, I know your real name. Is that a hard... All right, go ahead. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, it's Irv Jackson. Jackson. It's Irvin Jackson. Irvin. Oh, not Irving. Not Irving. Everybody oh, oh, well, would put a G well, that, on it, and I'd get so mad. Well, that was the reason why I, I called my Irving made Jackson? myself uh, Bennett Schwarzman instead of Ben Schwarzman, because then they'd say, is that for Bernard? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But so you were Irvin. Irvin, that's right. Irvin, okay. So you just felt the Irv was easier. Why yeah, did you use the, that? Let me just ask you quickly. Why did you use that name for radio? Because that was a great name for radio. I used it for years. Well, where did Jack Bishop come from? Uh, I left the Dallas market for about six months and went somewhere where my head got twisted and screwed up, and I came back, and I was starting all over. And... Uh, uh, I had had a problem with a listener in the market who was cookie cutter crazy, who found out where I lived and broke into my apartment. It was like play Misty for me only in stereo. <laughs> wow. And I was I was really worried about this woman coming back into my life. So here wow. I am. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm so here I am out of R&B radio playing beautiful music, and I wanted her to never think of me again in life. And that's why you God. changed your name. So I became Jack Bishop, Jack yeah. for Jackson and Bishop, because that was my dad's nickname. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I never yeah. even thought about Jackson and Jack, but you're right. Hey, listen. Let, us, uh, we, let uh, us never forget but, that your father and my mother worked at the same hotel at around the same time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wore different outfits, though. My yeah, father wore outfits. a tuxedo, and who knows what your mother wore. Oh, my mom was, a, uh, at that time, was right after the war. Yeah. Uh, she was a maid. Yeah, so dif different cost different outfits, but uh, same servitude. Hey, well, thank you, Jack. I have to get rid of you so you can go do your show. Hey, I got to get rid of you. I got to go do my yeah. show. Okay, bye, Jack. Hey, bye to the rest of you, too. Thank you so much to, uh, uh, to the, the, the panel which consists of Phil Meyer and Ray Renati. Of course, Jack Bishop was here and Jeff Stein. And, uh, and Kevin, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's been a good discussion, really good one. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow night. Bye, right. guys. Bye. Wave goodbye, Bye. will you? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. 
Ah, mm-hmm. yes, that's the citizens panel that we love and adore and appreciate and uh, uh, it, it thank them so much for spending as much time as they do with us. I'm Alex Bennett. Got to go. Jack Bishop is next with Amy Manuel, followed by uh, Connections at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Tomorrow night at uh, 8.30 Eastern Daylight Time, it's the Franchise MC and the Arena, our sports show, followed by, of course, The Exchange with da- Damian Chaplin. I'll be here again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, yeah, you know what? Tell her I love her, okay? Bye.